Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm Darren McBreen. It is Thursday, December 1st, 2016. And here's a quick look at what's coming up. Tonight, we look at President Obama versus President-elect Trump. Trump is keeping promises, keeping jobs, and he's still 50 days away from becoming president. Meanwhile, Obama is spending his last days as president forging new chains for the American economy. A mass of new regulations, with 100 of them alone costing several billion dollars. And we recall how Obama mocked Trump when he said he'd save the jobs at Carrier. What magic wand do you have? And Trump returns to the people for a victory tour. And InfoWars is there in Cincinnati, Ohio, for Trump's first face-to-face -face meeting with the people after winning the election. Then, fake news is nothing new. The people pushing censorship with the fake news meme have been purveyors of fake news for a very long time. All that and more on tonight's InfoWars Nightly News. As the Democrats, social justice warriors, and Hillary Clinton supporters finally begin to accept the fact that Donald Trump is the next president of the United States, the outgoing Obama administration, on the other hand, well, they seem to be having a rough time getting used to the idea. And they are blaming fake news websites for undermining America's political process. Obama says you have to be very careful because some of these news sites can be packaged very well and they often look like the real thing, but they could be extremely dangerous because fake news, according to Obama, is a direct threat to our democracy. There's so much active misinformation and it's packaged very well and it looks the same when you see it on a Facebook page or you turn on your television uh, where some uh, over uh, zealousness on the part of you know, uh, a US official is equated with constant and severe repression elsewhere if, if, if everything uh, seems to be the same and no distinctions are made, then uh, we won't know what to protect. We won't know what to fight for. Uh, and you, we can lose so much of what we've gained in terms of the kind of democratic freedoms and market-based economies and prosperity that we've come to take for granted then democracy will break down. So the election of Donald Trump has definitely triggered the Obama administration and the entire left because they relied heavily on the mainstream news media to rig the playing field in their favor and secure a victory for Hillary. I tell you what, they sure did underestimate Donald Trump and the power of independent and social media that is completely taking over right now. Times have changed. The election of Donald Trump shocked the world, and this makes the establishment very nervous and, I imagine, somewhat angry. So what is their next move? Well, they have decided to launch a fake news campaign against the rising alternative media. And believe me, you are going to hear a lot about this during the next few months on mainstream television. In fact, by Christmas, I bet some of you will be getting in arguments with certain family members about fake news. This is the next big push to control the narrative. First, we had Barack Obama talking about fake news and how it's a threat to democracy. And now the establishment media has received their marching orders, fake news is the new talking point, get used to it. They want Google and Facebook to censor fake news websites. Twitter has already announced that they will begin to purge accounts that belong to the alt-right. You know what that means, that means Infowars, that means Breitbart, that means the Drudge Report, we are all on the target list. And when Donald Trump posted on Twitter, 
that he would have won the popular vote if it wasn't for voter fraud. Well, CNN, right on cue, responded with a vicious hit piece, implying that the president-elect gets his intelligence reports from yours truly, InfoWars. There is no evidence of widespread voter fraud, of course, but there is one website that's reported this claim, this baseless claim, and it's one that maybe, I don't know, does Trump rely on this for his news? InfoWars is the brainchild of radio host Alex Jones, who Rolling Stone once called the most paranoid man in America. It's been a cozy relationship from the beginning. I will not let you down. You will be very, very uh, impressed, I hope. And I think we'll be speaking a lot. But Donald Trump and Alex Jones, the conservative conspiracy theorist and operator of the website InfoWars, which seems to be a place where Trump gets a lot of his information. Does it scare you that the president-elect is listening to InfoWars? Jones can take credit for spearheading some of the most outrageous theories on the Internet, from claims that 9-11 was a government conspiracy to the Sandy Hook shooting being faked. Jones has suggested that the 9-11 attacks and the Boston Marathon bombing were inside jobs by the U.S. government. And InfoWars helped fuel the rumor that President Obama is an ISIS supporter. Obama as the leader of ISIS. ISIS is honoring President Obama. He is the founder of ISIS. Jones' theories reached tens of millions each month and are now often echoed by the next president of the United States. This is the man who's going to be president of the United States, going, what? you know, following Infowars, yeah. talking about right, right. which I don't know anything. it was an inside job. If Donald Trump based his voter fraud claim on what he read on Infowars, it wouldn't be the first time. In a move that could further fuel concern, Alex Jones, operator of the Infowars website, says Trump called to offer his gratitude. Then she said, listen, Alex, I just talked to the kings and queens of the world, world leaders, you name it. He said, it doesn't matter. I wanted to talk to you to thank your audience, and I'll be on the next few weeks to thank them. When Trump argued that thousands and thousands of Muslims in New Jersey celebrated the 9-11 attacks, he tweeted a link to Infowars. When Jones posted this video entitled An Emergency oh, Message to Donald Trump during the campaign, I am going to ask you to seriously think about making the issue of Hillary's election fraud in the primaries one of the central issues to defeating her in November. Trump had this to say a day later. I'm afraid the election's going to be rigged, I have to be honest, because I think my side was rigged. And in the wake of the election, Jones pushing a theory that despite the vote totals, Trump actually won the popular vote. Millions of illegals voting, at least five states being stolen for Hillary. We're talking five, six, seven, eight million people more voting for Trump, if you look at the evidence, in the popular vote than did. And Trump tweeting just four days later, quote, in addition to winning the Electoral College in a landslide, I won the popular vote if you deduct the millions of people who voted illegally. I'll tell you, it is surreal to talk about issues here on air and then word for word hear Trump say it two days later. It is amazing. Where exactly does the president-elect get his information? Most importantly, perhaps, where does he get his intelligence information? It remains to be seen whether the conspiracy-driven website remains a go-to for the president-elect. Your reputation's amazing. I will not let you down. You will be very, very uh, impressed, I hope. And I think we'll be speaking a lot. Randy Kay, CNN, New York. Well, i tell you what, I guess they never learn uh, that what doesn't kill Donald Trump and in Infowars only makes us stronger. That's right. Margaret Howell is in the studio with us. And I wanted to get your take on that CNN hit piece. Where do we begin? There's so many lies in there about Alex Jones. I mean, it, it never ends. They're shameless lies. Not only are they lying, but they know that they're lying. They're doing it anyway. And here's why they're doing it, because they're on the losing end of the stick. They know that they're uh, not relevant. Uh, their, their narrative is crumbled. It's gone. So, Darren, and I know that you, we put this in the clip, there's actually a cry-on with Alex Jones, our boss's face, and it says KKK leader praises Bannon Choice. 
he's not a KKK leader, folks. I mean, I don't know if you've gotten the message or not, but uh, yeah, that's kind of, um, how should we say, lawsuit worthy? You know, they don't care. We're talking about a network that aired 30 minutes of straight porn on Thanksgiving and didn't notice. That's who we're dealing with. They, they're supposedly the media elites in this country. Well, and they always, when they mention Alex Jones in the same breath, it's always conspiracy theory. Mm -hmm. And they always talk about the 9-11 cover-up, which is no longer a conspiracy theory, folks. It, it is out in the open. Google search the 28 pages. Turn off your televisions and do some simple research. The documents are now declassified thanks to the 9-11 victims' families who have been pushing Congress for disclosure for a very, very long time. We now know for a fact that the government of Saudi Arabia and members of the Saudi royal family helped train and finance the 9-11 hijackers. This was an act of war, and the cover-up went all the way to the top of the Bush administration. It's a okay. historical fact. We cover it. CNN refuses to right. do so. Iraq had nothing to do with 9-11, this we know. Yeah. More importantly, though, at this point, the 28 pages, the heavily redacted 28 pages that were under a vault, guarded, lock and key, you know, no one could see them except for very high elite officials. A FOIA request was submitted. This has taken years to get this unlocked. They're redacted so heavily anyway. Here's what we know. We know that Saudi Arabia is directly implicated and involved in 9-11. Those are just facts, folks. And the 9-11 Commission report, which is mostly false anyway, we have 28 pages of somewhat accurate information and we can't have those uh, you know shared with the public Darren because you know that really it hacks into the lie that maybe they told us to get into war hmm you exactly know, and, wow and I, I want to go over the the real fake news and that is CNN right. CNN has a long history of fake news let's take a look at some of the CNN anchors fake a satellite interview in the same parking lot I mean you could see the same bus driving by in the background as they pretend to talk to each other from separate locations mm -hmm. and they're actually sitting right next to each other mm -hmm. probably as close as you and I are right now right WikiLeaks CNN's Donna Brazil you know about all this Ooh. I mean they gave her Hillary Clinton's that she gave Hillary Clinton the questions in advance at these debates mm -hmm. Uh, it, there, there's no, uh, oh, it's mind boggling how, of course, they have to let her go and let her fall on the sword because they can't actually take any responsibility. Well, she denied it for Just, weeks uh, until the second one came exactly. out. Exactly. Then you can't really, <laughs> you know, some, yeah, oh, wow, Donna Brazil, where to start with that? But the fact that she was at CNN to begin with, what does that say about their credibility? We're talking about a woman who's made very controversial statements. Look, she's got no problem lying, I will yeah. say. Here's another one. And, and this one happened right after the election. Remember the guy. They interviewed Donald Trump mm -hmm. protesters. CNN caught up with this guy. He was very He's angry. Protester. And, it, and it turned out to be he was the he cameraman. For CNN. So, so they needed an out, <laughs> somebody that was pissed off at Donald Trump. They said, well, let's just get our cameraman. Yeah. <laughs> okay, there's another one. And now I remember this was early during the campaign. Jeb Bush was still running. And CNN ran a report. Uh, this was a full report of an angry woman at a Trump rally who was supposed to be an average woman from the audience, and she was mad at Trump for the way he treats women. But she turned out to be a Jeb Bush staffer, and she was planted in the audience. Now, we discovered this within minutes mm -hmm. here at InfoWars. CNN, they certainly could have done the same, but they ran with the story <laughs> anyway. Donald Trump is always using the C word about women. I cherish women. I cherish women. I cherish women. I don't think that you're a friend to women. How, what, it... I knew I shouldn't have picked her. Did mom ever stare at you like this, Donald? So, you know, that's they're the they real do. fake news. They're the real fake news. That's right. CNN... Your time is up. You're at the back of the bus. I just hope that he revokes their press passes, that they don't have a seat at the table in the White House press briefing room. That would just, well, you know. Well, and, and Alex. And, and, and maybe I, put him in the back. But yeah, put them in the back. Uh, that's a good idea. Mm -hmm. Well, we also know this. Independent media, social media is taking over. A lot of times Trump's not even going to have to do press conferences. He can get on Twitter or just do a video on Facebook. Just live stream, you know, bypass all this garbage altogether. They're going to take everything you say anyway and twist it, contort it, and uh, lie about you. You might as well, you know, I'm greatly encouraged by the meeting that he had with media elites in this country. Mm -hmm. He understands what they tried to do to him very well. And... Uh, yeah, I think that the live streaming aspect of that would be a much better decision as opposed to entertaining these frauds. They're frauds. They're absolute frauds.
Now, do you think that fake news, that's going to be the new narrative, and it's going to replace conspiracy theories? It's not going to be fake news. <laughs> Excuse me. I think that, uh, no, I, I do. You know, they, they've tried to paint us as fake news. You know this. Mm -hmm. um, even doing a hit piece, Aaron Burnett did a hit piece on Alex um, and trying to link him to Trump so that Trump disavows him. You know, they're the real fake news. I'm so tired of hearing this. We've seen Yahoo News come out and try to censor and and indict fake news. Um, Facebook accounts being taken down if they're reporting any truth or any facts. Twitter being censored. I want to tell people, and Leanne and I touched on this briefly last night, Twitter, you know, Jack Dorsey owes Trump a check for uh, just the fame and traffic that he brought to Twitter. How dare he? They'd rather cut off their own hands and stop making money as long as they can hurt Trump somehow as opposed to just, you know, getting on with it. It's really strange. Well, and same with the mainstream news media. They're, I, I tell you what, their ratings would skyrocket mm -hmm. if they just tell the truth. Correct. But it's not about that. They're in bed with the establishment. That's where they get their marching orders, and that's what this is all about. Mm -hmm. But look, fake news is, is here to stay as far as the talking point within the mainstream media. Facebook and Google plan to punish alt-right news sites and refuse to pay them for advertisements. Mm -hmm. Apple is purging Breitbart. So get used to it. I think we're going to hear a lot more about this in the future. I, I agree with you. You know, despite the fact that Breitbart had 168 million in traffic on their website last month alone, despite the fact that I, the word on the street is that Nigel Farage is going to start writing for Breitbart. They have very talented staff and they, they really work hard to bring people the truth. You and I cite them often on the show. Uh, yeah, none of that matters at all. What matters is uh, that, uh, you know, they're fake. And we got to get rid of them because it's our position to do so. Well, the good news is independent media is here to stay. Hey, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, Barack Obama makes fun of Donald Trump for saving jobs in America. InfoWars Nightly News will return right after this. Stick around. Well, I'll tell you what, Barack Obama is looking pretty stupid right now because there is a video that has surfaced where he has seen making fun of President-elect Donald Trump for promising to save jobs in America. And the video has already begun to backfire on Obama big time. Check it out. When somebody says, like the person you just mentioned, who I'm not going to advertise for, that he's going to bring all these jobs back. Well, how exactly are you going to do that? What are you going to do? There's, the, there's no answer to it. He just says, well, I'm going, to, I'm going to negotiate a better deal. Well, how, what, how exactly are you going to negotiate that? What magic wand do you have? And usually the answer is he doesn't have an answer. That video was taken six months ago, and now that Donald Trump has become the next president of the United States, he's already saving jobs before he even steps foot into the White House. And he has successfully negotiated a deal with air conditioner company Carrier to keep 1,000 jobs in the U.S. No magic wand, just good negotiating skills and a passion to put America first and save the working class hero. The president-elect of the United States of America, Donald Trump. We have a lot to be thankful for with Mr. Trump, a lot to celebrate. The fact that globalism and political correctness is being exposed. The fact that he isn't even in office yet and now Carrier is staying in Indiana, Ford is staying in Kentucky, and even Apple's talking about moving some of their factories back to the United States for the facilities they run in nightmare conditions in China. Yes, I'm thankful for Trump and the march of nationalism from Le Pen in France to, of course, Great leaders like Nigel Farage in the UK and Vladimir Putin in Russia. Human destiny is awakening. But I'm not just thankful for Trump. I'm also thankful to God that we dodged the bullet that is Hillary Rodham Clinton. We came, we saw, he died. <laughs>
<laughs> Look. It's not a laughing matter. I take it really seriously. Vote for me because I'm a woman. One of my mirrors is I'm a woman. Not all these mothers vote for me because I'm a woman. Because I'm a woman. Vote for me because I'm a woman. One of my mirrors is I'm a woman. Not all these mothers vote for me because I'm a woman. Because I'm a woman. A woman running to be the first woman president. I cannot imagine anyone being more of an outsider than the first woman Who president. Who can be more of an outsider than a woman president? Well, I can't think of anything more of an outsider than electing the first woman president. A woman president of the United States. The most important thing about being free is individual sovereignty. Because it be began really back in the 1840s, less than 75 years after the formation of the United States of America, when they gave the power of the individual to corporations. But none of the penalties. None of the penalties. The issue is the earth. We cannot change the political system. We cannot change the economic system. We cannot change the social system until the people control the land. And then we take it out of the hands of that sick minority. The unyielding corporatic encroachment of the $3.7 billion Dakota Access Pipeline at Standing Rock in the Dakotas is essentially the painful opening of a very old wound in American history. This deliberate neglect of the established rights expressed in the Treaty of Fort Laramie met resistance April 1, 2016 at Sacred Stone Camp by Standing Rock Historic Preservation Officer LaDonna Brave Bull Allard. In September, Allard said, if we allow an oil company to dig through and destroy our histories, our ancestors, our hearts and souls as people, is that not genocide? Most Americans need only witness the lopsided attack on the American culture of the Sioux people, defending their land, drinking water, and the protection of our American heritage to realize that the existence of tyranny is very real in 2016. As we uh, go through American history, we see how they continue to put the handcuffs on American people, and now it's complete. We're a police state, no doubt about it. This is how they learn to get people dependent through the uh, you know, the government agents that, that uh, you know, ran the programs to, quote, give the, you know, in Indians food and blankets. Uh, it was all designed to starve you out and kill you. And now they admit this is their global plantation model. That's what the carbon tax they admit is, is to shut off all of our energy, the equivalent of shutting off the buffalo uh, to the Native Americans. See, the Native people... Yes, we have the land, and they wanted the land, and it's about the land, you see, but the real enemy to the industrial ruling class is those who think differently. It's about sharing and taking care, and it's about respecting the earth, and it's about spirit, and it's about these. See, so this is the perceptional reality that we came from. This is how we knew and recognized reality. See, this is what was the threat. Exterminate the spiritual perceptional reality. That's what it's been all about. The federal hypocrisy looms large. When during the 2014 standoff, the BLM issued a hyperactive protective order in respect to the endangered desert tortoise, attempting to gain the upper hand on the Bundy's grazing rights. That role is now reversed at Standing Rock as the potential for future poisoning of the Oahe Reservoir threatens the endangered pallid sturgeon, a species of fish that dates back 70 million years that has already suffered enough from the progressive of management of its habitat along the Missouri River. Why does conservation only apply to what is financially convenient? That's what they want to do, a diaspora, and therefore, guess whose land they're after? In our meager holdings, 
on trust land. Over 40% of the natural resource wealth of America is still under and on our lands. The behavior pattern of this, and historically speaking, of this industrial ruling class never really changes. What changes is the technology, the terminology, and the generations. So now, so for Wounded Knee Massacre, I think that forms that massacre are taking place now today. The authoritarian emergence of uh, the, the Patriot Act and all of these various mechanisms, controlling mechanisms, I think that they're psychologically massacring the American citizens mentally. And now North Dakota Governor Jack Dalrymple is ordering a mandatory voluntary evacuation of the camp led by the Standing Rock Sioux Tribe by December 5th, adding to the mounting tension. The Obama administration is claiming they're pushing the Army Corps of Engineers to finalize a rerouting of the pipeline. 2,000 veterans relieved the protesters at Standing Rock, and DNB, Norway's largest bank, has gotten cold feet. They trade that reservation and the value of that reservation and the value of its people, the value of its air, the value of its carbon emissions are traded on Wall Street. John Bound for InfoWars.com. In case you have... Owen Schroyer here for InfoWars.com, and I was awoke today with another beautiful push notification from Yahoo, demonizing fake news. Now, this one went to another level, and I'll get to the content of it in a minute, but here is the story from Matt By at Yahoo News, the real problem behind fake news. Now, this is the narrative that they're running with now. Anything that isn't mainstream, anything that hasn't been vetted by Yahoo or CNN or Fox or ABC or CBS or NBC or MSNBC or any of these mainstream news outlets, well, then it's fake. If it's not vetted by them because they're big brother, they're the gatekeepers. That's total bull, folks. This is how you begin to descend into a communist or a tyrannical government right here with gatekeepers and big brother. So. I mean, let me tell you, I actually thank Matt By because he got me fired up as soon as I woke up this morning. But here's where they go, folks. Now, we already know about the fake news. We already know about how they're trying to attack us on the fake news. We already know about how they want to demonize anything that doesn't come from their mouth. But now it goes to another level, folks. You never thought you'd hear it. So he talks about how he talks about how first everybody's first response to the fake news was well, let's police it, let's censor it, let's try to get it off of these platforms, right? Well, Matt By has a new solution because that one failed, didn't it? Because you can't control the people, can you? And when you censor us, that backfires, doesn't it? So Matt By has a new solution, folks. I can't believe I'm about to report on this. Truly, we are living in 1984. Matt By says that the long-term solution isn't is about stemming the demand the answer doesn't lie in hectoring tech companies into policing content but rather in teaching our kids how to consume it this is the indoctrination and the re-education of the youth matt by and his ilk trust me cnn and obama and clinton they're all right along this same train folks they want to now i bet they put it in the schools Anything that isn't CNN or Fox or Yahoo or any of the mainstream outlets is deemed fake. And then if you don't have the Facebook verification or the Twitter verification, well, then you're fake. This is truly the beginning of 1984 control over media in the United States. So he goes on. And he talks about how it was great when there were only three networks, how you could control the news, how you could trust the reporters, on and on and on, all this stuff. And then the genesis of the Internet age, how it's changed everything. And basically what he decides is because of all these developments, because of the technology, because it's so crazy and because of the fake news, you know, I'm fake news reporting on his story. I'm fake news. He wants to indoctrinate your children into the mainstream media at the very onset of them coming in to reading news or, or engaging in media. Folks, I don't know what Matt By's deal is, okay? I don't know if Matt By is some bought and paid for globalist. I don't know if he's being blackmailed. I don't know if he's just a complete idiot. I don't know if he hates free speech. I don't know if he hates me. I don't know what Matt By's deal is, okay? But here's what I know. Matt, 
If you think that indoctrinating children into mainstream news, 1984 style, I mean, what other movies out there have we seen this? I can't even think of all the movies that we've seen this in. There's one with Christian Bale. I wish I could remember it right now. It's an older one, but we see it. They put the kids in front of the TV. They have the bought and paid for state-run propaganda, and then that's their reality. And then they're churned out into being indoctrinated citizens into the perfect little globalist structure where they don't think for themselves, they don't look outside the box, and they never know the truth. So here's the thing, Matt Bot. You can try to indoctrinate our kids into the mainstream news, you can try to demonize me and Infowars.com, Alex Jones, or anybody else out there as fake news, but it's not going to work. Your last ditch effort to completely enslave Americans' minds is failing. And I don't know what makes you write a story like this. Do you really think that I'm fake news? Do you really turn on CNN or MSNBC and think that they're trying to give you the whole truth and nothing but the truth? You're the one that's been fooled, Matt By. You're the one that needs to go to a re-education camp, Matt By. In fact, I would suggest that you get out of your little paradigm for a day. Get out of your little social circle circle for a day. Get out of your little square cut and cut and dry news, real news for a day. Go to Infowars.com. Go listen to an Alex Jones show from two or three years ago. Go listen to a broadcast I did from two or three years ago. Go listen to a broadcast CNN did two or three years ago. And you tell me what is fake news and what is real news. But I got news for you, buddy. If you think Americans are going to willingly go along giving their children up to a system of indoctrination, you got another thing coming. And the whole time he's electing, he's talking about the whole reason this whole fake news is spreading is because we have fake politics now. Like Donald Trump's fake. <laughs> These people are totally freaking out because we are taking our country back, folks. That's the story at the end of the day. So they can try to character assassinate Trump. They can try to demonize anyone who's not mainstream as fake. But we are winning this battle. And we are now just hours away from beginning the Trump victory parade. Let me guess, it was fake when Donald Trump said that jobs were leaving this country. That must have been fake. And then it must have been fake when he saved thousands of jobs and multiple manufacturing plants from leaving this country. Was that fake too, Matt Pye? No, the truth is, you're fake, okay? So why don't you take a serious look in the mirror, see if you even have a reflection, and then get outside of your little paradigm, and then you might find out what's real and what's fake. I'll tell you what's real, the Donald Trump victory tour, and we're going to be there tonight. I'm standing outside of the U.S. Bank Arena where Donald Trump is set to have his first of what is said to be his victory tour rallies. Now, as you can see behind me, folks, there is already a line wrapping around U.S. Bank Arena. There are already people down here, and we're still... We are still, looks like, uh, about four or five hours away from the event actually starting. So we were curious, what kind of turnout can we expect from this? Will we still get the massive turnout that we saw at his campaign rallies? Well, all signs right now point to yes. Now, we just walked by, folks, and I'm not going to lie. I got my InfoWars hat on. Multiple people said, yeah, we love you guys, and gave us a fist pump. So the Info Warriors are out here and strong. But more than just that, like I said, we've already got Trump supporters lined up around the building to see Donald Trump speak tonight. We've got multiple vendors down street level selling Trump gear. That's already selling. So the Trump movement is still strong. It's still going. And I think it's very wise of Donald Trump to continue to use the momentum that he built from his presidential campaign to keep doing rallies, keep getting people to come out, keep speaking directly to the American people. And let's remember, there were a lot of people during the campaign cycle that did not like Donald Trump or were indifferent that then went to hear him speak or went to one of his events and then they came around. Then they liked Donald Trump. Then they were open-minded to Donald Trump. So this is a great tactic to try to quell some of the division that has been created by the mainstream media around Donald Trump. This is how Trump can trump the mainstream media by going directly to the people, speaking directly to the people, and avoiding whatever false narratives they try to paint 
in the mainstream media and also just get people who are indifferent or unaware of what Trump is doing and saying to come out here and hear for themselves. So it'll be interesting if we see that phenomenon taking place as well. But what we're going to do is we're going to stay right here. Stay tuned to the Alex Jones channel on YouTube. Make sure you're at Infowars.com. We're going to keep you up to date on everything that goes on with this Trump rally, the numbers of people that get here. We are expecting protests. We'll also be covering that. But right now, the question that we had earlier, what kind of what type of turnout are we going to get for the Donald Trump victory tour? All signs point to big at the U.S. Bank Arena tonight in Cincinnati, Ohio. We have just discovered the rarest Pepe in the world, the meme in the flesh at Donald Trump's victory rally. Yeah. Pepe the Frog, what do you have to say? I'm a deplorable. This is the deplorable Pepe the Frog. He's upset. He was called deplorable by Hillary Clinton. We're hoping that we can raise his spirits today. Pepe, I think we're going to make America great again, buddy. I'm just a meme. So it's tough to get Pepe the Frog to speak. This is the rarest Pepe in the world. He's got the Make America hat again on. He's been called a racist. He's been called a deplorable. But no, folks, he's really, he's just a, he's just a meme. He's a friendly meme right here. He just wants to make America great again. We're going to help you make America great again. We're not going to let people call you deplorable and racist anymore, Pepe. We're going to put a smile back on that face. How about that? Thank you, Alex. Can we get a little smile for Alex today? A little one. There we go, folks. Pepe the Frog. Hey, how about that, folks? We're going to make America great again with Pepe the Frog or any other memes or people they call deplorable. We're sick of being demonized deplorable. We're the real Americans. <laughs> Two American literature classics that are found on thousands of shelves across the country have been pulled from one Virginia County Public Schools after a parent filed a complaint regarding racial slurs. Now, I'm talking about two books that you are, of course, familiar with if you went to high school here in the United States, um, To Kill a Mockingbird and The Adventures of Huck Fenn. This is coming out of CBS Baltimore. One parent files a complaint about the racial slurs found in The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn and To Kill a Mockingbird, and the school yanked both books. Students can't find them because, hey, they want you dumb in Accomack County. Now, these two classics, the Accomack County Public Schools, they removed them from their shelves following a complaint, and uh, the contention is that a racial slur appears 219 times in The Adventures of Huck Finn and 48 times in The Kill a Mockingbird. Now, there's a committee of the principal, the district um, officials, the librarian, the teacher, the parent. They're going to review the complaint. The books could be removed permanently. Uh, so if you're going to school in Accomack County, you're not going to be able to uh, read these two books in the school system because they are offensive, they offend people, and they should just be banned. Well, the sensitivity police are on this. Check out this article. It's up on our website at Infowars.com. While you're at it, be sure to download our app. We're uploading videos each and every day just for you on this app. Infowars.com forward slash app. I'm Margaret Hall reporting for Infowars.com. This is a former NIST employee speaking out about Building 7. Now, this is a guy that worked as a scientist for NIST for 15 years. And he said he never read the World Trade Center Building 7. That's the third building that fell down that wasn't hit by any planes. He said he read that report for the first time in August of 2016, August of this year. 15 years after the fact, he had not read it. See, that's why it's important to have media that is not part of the mainstream media. You just saw earlier in the program, Anderson Cooper mocking Infowars, mocking Alex Jones, saying these are people who don't believe the government's official story. It's like, that's right. Didn't believe it day one. Donald Trump didn't believe it day one. Still don't believe it. And there's a lot of people out here, even people like this educated scientist who worked for 15 years for NIST, the National Institute of Standards and Technology. They're the ones that most of these people who say, oh, you guys are just a bunch of crazy conspiracy theorists, they go back to NIST and say, see, NIST said there's nothing to see. It's just natural that a steel building would fall down when it catches on fire, even though that has never happened before or since. And this building was not hit by a plane. That's why I've, I've talked to the uh, United Kingdom documentarian Tony Rook. He has interviewed people there. There's one U.K. fireman who went to bat for this in the U.K., Okay, they're not uh, trying to repeal the Patriot Act there, but he knows that this matters. He's a fireman, and he says, wait, if this story is true, if a steel building like this can just fall down, you need to change the standards for construction. You need to give different 
uh, rules and regulations to the firemen. We're still doing it the same way we always did, assuming that this wouldn't happen. So why haven't you changed the rules for architectural standards? Why haven't you changed the rules for firemen? And that's what this NIST scientist is pointing out as well. See, the truth is going to eventually come out. Joe Biggs here with Infowars.com. Now, what I want to talk about is one of the most popular topics right now on the Internet, and it's been censored and removed from many different sites. It's Pizzagate. Now, Pizzagate is it's a very difficult subject matter to go into. What Pizzagate is is a group of people who eventually decided that there was a connection to the John Podesta emails that were released by WikiLeaks and somehow uh, pedophile lingo and handkerchief lingo because they uncovered these really kind of creepy and quite frankly very odd emails. Now does that mean that they are involved in pedophilia? Does that mean that they're involved in these acts? We don't have enough proof to, to say that whatsoever. At the end of the day you have to be very careful when covering something like this because if there is no connection to that and this is all just speculation because at the end of the day when you look for something hard enough you will eventually see what it is you're looking for. Um, you could be sued. So the biggest thing to do is Let's not focus so much uh, on the comet ping pong and all this. Let's actually look at what Pizzagate really is. And that is the fact that child pedophile rings do exist. That there are adult human beings who go out and commit heinous uh, acts on these young children. Um, they get them addicted to drugs. They pawn them off. Human trafficking. Um, all kinds of sexual acts that are just unspeakable and inhumane. And that stuff does exist. There was a place called Dojo Pizza that was running for quite some time. And the FBI raided that spot and found that there were underage women that were being used there under the ages of 17. And later on, they ended up busting the guy that owned that spot for child pornography. So these places do exist. So we have to start focusing on the things that we've proven, the things that we can show people that this truly does exist, while kind of talking about, hey, this could be linked to something else. Um, that's probably the best way to go around it. But what we do know is that it does exist, and there is proof of that over years of uh, research and different raids and arrests and things like that. We know that John Podesta has hung out um, with some very interesting individuals that we, we've seen these people that have hung out with uh, Jeffrey Epstein. The Clintons have been there. They've been to the Pedo Island before. These are things that we can factually prove. So instead of just getting one-sided, just kind of not even looking anywhere else, and having your blinders up and staring at one thing, let's just focus on what we can prove. And what we can prove is that there are actual pedophile rings that exist. Now, I did a video a few months back of something that's kind of related to this. Joe Biggs here with Infowars.com. Now, last week, an article came out in the Daily Mail titled Decorated Green Beret is kicked out of U.S. Army Special Forces after shoving Afghan police commander who raped boy who was 12 years old and then beat up his mother when she reported the crime to higher ups. And now you have a decorated soldier who was with the U.S. Army Special Forces for 11 years. He is now being kicked out after he stood up for a young rape victim and his mother who were beaten by this rogue police commander. Now word got out to Sergeant First Class Martlin that one of the police commanders that he had trained had sexually assaulted a boy and hit his mother and he decided to take action. There was a squabble between him and the commander and he shoved this guy to the ground. Now this Afghan police commander left with only bruises and nothing really serious and the army saw fit to essentially remove him from his position in Afghanistan, put him at a desk job for a while, and then send him back home, where now they have involuntarily discharged him from the Army. Now, there's a lot of people in the operator community, special forces, higher-ups, and politicians who think this is a disgrace and want to hell this Sergeant First Class Marlin as a hero, which he should be, because there is a rape culture going on in Afghanistan. I myself have witnessed that type of things uh, when I was deployed in Afghanistan. We used to call it Man Love Thursday, where you would see and hear just some of the most god-awful things that will never leave your mind. Now, you didn't see the actual stuff, but you could see a grown man 
holding a younger boy's hand, and you know that they weren't father and son, that there was something going on. Now, the Washington Examiner reported on the invading troop struggle with the constant displays of affection towards young boys, as well as glaring evidence of underage homosexual activity. I know Marines and soldiers who have refused to work with Afghan military or police, said one U.S. military official who spoke to the Examiner anonymously. It's not about homosexuality as much as it is about the young boys. Some of them like to show pictures on their cell phone. That should be illegal. Some of the Afghans have their own young boys they use for sexual purpose, and we can't do anything about it. Now, the situation is particularly troublesome because the people committing the abuse are the people working with coalition forces. In other words, these are the people the coalition funds. We in the West are working with people who rape children in order to throw out the people who prevented this practice. Now, during the Taliban rule of the region from 1996 until late 2001, under Mullah Omar, Bachabazi was driven from the social norm and outlawed as a transgression against humanity and Allah. A zero-tolerance ban on sodomy and all forms of homosexuality, Bachabazi chief among these, was enforced throughout the region with martial capital and lethal strength. The Taliban's parameters drew from a pre-Islamic Pashtun code as well as a rigid strain of Wahhabi doctrines. This new governance brought with it an emphasis on eliminating immoral vices. All right, folks, that's going to do it for tonight's broadcast. InfoWars Nightly News will return, Lord willing, tomorrow evening, 7 o'clock p.m. Central Time. Until then, have a blessed evening, and we'll see you back right here tomorrow. See you.